All right, the I can for today is I can classify two dimensional figures. And we're gonna jump right into an analogy, okay? So I know phones are pretty popular. Everybody wants a phone, not everybody. I didn't get a phone until I was, or a cell phone until I was 16. So it's okay if you don't have a phone. I can classify two dimensional figures. We're gonna start with an analogy. So let's think of categories. Let's think of phones, okay? There are many different kinds of phones, right? Now let's be more specific. Let's say within the category of phones, you're going to get more specific, and we can think of iPhones. Okay? Let's get even more specific. Let's say that, let's talk about a model. So this is the iPhone, I'm just putting quotations around it, 10. So the most specific definition I have here is the iPhone 10. Okay? If I get less specific, I can just say iPhones, and then the least specific is just phones. The category is phones, the subcategories are iPhones and iPhone 10. If you want to get more specific, you can talk about color um, or storage space. Now let's relate that to shapes. So let's talk about polygons. So polygons is the most general category. Let's get more specific. Let's talk about triangles, so three-sided polygons. And then you can get even more specific and then talk about a scalene triangle, so classifying it or identifying it by its side lengths, right? All sides are unequal, it's a scalene triangle. So try to compare these two and understand that phones and polygons are two types of categories. I could have used anything. I could use a dog, like a dog breed and gone more specific. Um, could have used food and gotten more specific, but you can try it too. Just try any kind of category and try to get as specific as you can. Okay, this is what we're doing with classifying um, two dimensional figures. Okay, the one tricky part, honestly, is if you don't know your definitions. If you don't know the definitions of the shapes, that's where things get tricky. So let's just look at a neat little hierarchy that just deals with um, polygons. So we're going to say that this entire massive box is going to be the category of polygons. Now remember, when I draw a box inside or shape inside um, the big shape, that means it's getting more and more specific, okay? So the two that we talk about in fifth grade are triangles, that's an A, excuse that looking, Q looking thing, there we go, triangles, and then we have quadrilaterals. Now obviously these two are not the same, but they both are polygons, right? So that's why they're in the category of polygons. So let's box out the triangles and then we'll box out the quadrilaterals. Remember there's subcategories of polygons. So let's start with triangles first and let's focus on side names for triangles because you can do angles or side names. So the two types of triangles in fifth grade that talk about side names that you can get more specific with is you have your scalene, right? And your scalene has three sides that are unequal. Right? Then you have isosceles. Now the isosceles triangle can get even more specific because it's at least two sides that are equal. But then you have the equilateral triangle. That's gonna run out. Equilateral triangles. Now equilateral triangles have all sides that are equal. Right? An equilateral triangle is an isosceles triangle because an isosceles triangle has at least two sides that are equal. An isosceles triangle is a triangle, and a triangle is a polygon. That's how the subcategories work. Let's look at quadrilaterals. Let's get more specific with quadrilaterals and that'll bring us to trapezoids. Now a trapezoid has at least one pair of parallel sides, okay? Parallel lines, parallel sides. Get more specific and you'll get to parallelograms. That's two pairs of parallel lines, sides. And then you can get even more specific, and actually, I'm going to make a kind of like a funny looking shape. So let's do, let's do a Venn diagram inside here because it's important to see that there's two separate categories, which is rhombus and rectangle. Now a rhombus, the definition of a rhombus is four sides that are equal. The rectangle is four angles that are equal, 90 degrees. Now that one part that overlaps, and so I drew a circle, or somewhat of a circle, because I wanted to 
focus on the overlapping part, which is unusual, but the only overlapping part is the square. Now, if I combine the attributes of a rectangle and a rhombus, I'm going to get a square. A square has four sides, sorry, four sides that are equal, which is a rhombus, and a square has four right angles, which is a rectangle. Okay, so let's review classifying two-dimensional figures. When you classify, think about the most general category, polygons, right? And you can get more and more specific. If I had a bigger box for the polygons, I could have added um, pentagons and hexagons and heptagons, and I could have gone on and on and on different sides or sided polygons, right? But I just focus on triangle and quadrilateral because that's what they focus on in fifth grade. And then I went even more specific and more specific. And again, of the quadrilateral, even more specific and more specific. Um, and practice, like ask yourself, is a rectangle quadrilateral? Always, sometimes, or never. Always. A rectangle is always a quadrilateral. When you go into a more specific category and reference it from a lesser specific category, it's going to be always, right? Let's go back to the phone example. Is an iPhone 10 always an iPhone? Yes, it's even in the it's even in, even in the name, right? An iPhone 10 is always an iPhone. An iPhone is always a phone, right? So when you get to form a specific category to a lesser specific category, it's always. Now when you go and do the opposite, if you reference the phone to the iPhone 10, that answer will be sometimes. A phone doesn't always have to be an iPhone 10. A phone can also be um a Samsung Galaxy or a Google Pixel. Let's look back at the polygons. A quadrilateral doesn't always have to be a rectangle. It's sometimes a rectangle, but a quadrilateral can be a trapezoid. A quadrilateral can just be a trapezoid, right? It doesn't have to be a rectangle. It can just be a quadrilateral. A quadrilateral can be just a parallelogram. It doesn't have to be as specific as a rectangle. All right, so just remember the most important part is to really know your definitions because if you know your definitions, then it's easy to kind of um, categorize them and then classify them. So there you go for classifying two-dimensional figures.